Hey everyone, Brandon here from TruckSafe. It's 2023 and personal conveyance remains one of the most misunderstood and abused aspects of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations. It's one of the leading contributors to log falsification violations, roadside out of service orders, elevated hours of service scores, downgraded safety ratings, and civil penalties to name a few. That's what we're discussing in this video, so stay tuned and do us a favor, hit that like and subscribe button below if you find this type of content helpful. So personal conveyance misuse is so prominent now that it has its own violation code in the safety measurement system methodology. You'll see these written up pretty regularly in roadside inspection reports. With so much at stake, it's critical that carriers and their drivers understand exactly when personal conveyance is acceptable. We broke that down in another video on this topic. But what we found is that despite their best efforts to internalize the agency's personal conveyance guidance, carriers and drivers continue to run into problems with this topic. So in this video, we're going to tackle what we view as the five most common personal conveyance mistakes and how to avoid them in no particular order. All right, first up is what I call the safe haven fallacy. Now, we often hear drivers and carriers justifying their use of personal conveyance by claiming to use the status to find a safe haven to obtain a required rest break. In other words, the driver's run out of available hours and has switched over to personal conveyance status to find a safe location to park and rest. In most cases, this is not a permissible use of personal conveyance. There is simply no such thing as a safe haven allowance for personal conveyance use. The one and only exception to this general rule is a situation where a driver runs out of available hours while waiting to be loaded or unloaded at a shipper or receiver facility. In that limited circumstance, FMCSA's personal conveyance guidance says it is permissible for the driver to utilize personal conveyance status to leave the shippers or receiver facility and drive to the very first available safe resting location to obtain the required rest break. Now, a couple of important notes here. First, this allowance is not applicable in situations when a driver runs out of hours after already leaving the shippers or receivers facility. And second, a driver who runs out of hours while at a shipper or receiver location can only use personal conveyance to get to the very first available safe resting location. Put differently, the driver cannot pass other safe resting locations in personal conveyance status to get to a more preferred location. So you may be asking, what's the solution if you run out of available hours while on the road? Well, FMCSA and law enforcement will tell you the answer is better planning on your part. You need to be seeking out available resting locations well before you're up against your time limits. Flipping to personal conveyance status in these scenarios will inevitably end up with you being cited for log falsification, which in most cases is worse than the underlying substantive hours of service violations you would have incurred otherwise. All right, second on the list here of common personal conveyance mistakes is the misuse of commute time. Now, another common misunderstanding is that drivers can commute to or from their resting location and a shipper or receiver facility in off-duty personal conveyance status. This misunderstanding undoubtedly has its roots in the FMCSA's own personal conveyance guidance, which has the following to say about permissible uses of personal conveyance. Commuting between the driver's terminal and his or her residence, between trailer drop lots and the driver's residence, and between work sites and his or her residence. Now, folks often misinterpret this section of guidance as broader than it really is. Simply put, so-called commute time can only be properly logged as off-duty personal conveyance when a driver is operating a commercial motor vehicle to and from the driver's residence and his or her normal work reporting location, in most cases the carrier's terminal. It is expressly not permissible for drivers to log commute time to and from their homes and a customer facility. But what about that reference to work sites in the FMCSA's guidance, you're probably asking? What exactly is a work site if not a customer location? It's a good question, and it's one that we had early on when the agency first published the guidance. But the FMCSA has offered the following clarification. The term worksite refers to a location other than a carrier's terminal or shippers or receiver's facility where a driver works for a temporary period for a particular job. Specifically, this term is intended for construction and utility companies that set up base camps near a major job and operate from there for days or weeks at a time. These remote locations are considered off-site locations. Therefore, travel between home and that off-site location is considered commuting time and qualifies as personal conveyance. So, in essence, personal conveyance is only appropriately used for commuting when that commute time is between the driver's residence and a carrier terminal or other off-site location where the carrier has set up shop and has essentially become that carrier's terminal. 
All right, the third most common personal conveyance mistake is enhancing operational readiness. Now, the FMCSA's guidance very explicitly prohibits drivers from using PC status to enhance the operational readiness of a motor carrier. But what exactly does that mean? Well, the example given in the guidance is bypassing available resting locations in order to get closer to the next loading or unloading point or other scheduled motor carrier destination. Another common example is repositioning an empty commercial motor vehicle in PC status such that it is closer to the next pickup point. Simply put, if the commercial motor vehicle is being moved in a way that readies it for the next move, then such time needs to be logged as driving rather than off-duty personal conveyance. All right, the fourth most common personal conveyance mistake is over-reliance on personal conveyance. Now, we often encounter carriers and drivers who rely heavily on personal conveyance, even when it gains them nothing. For example, let's say a driver runs a regular weekly route starting at 7 a.m. and ending at 4 p.m. each day with the weekends off. In this example, the driver's really never at risk of violating the substantive hours of service limits. At most, he's driving nine hours a day and 45 hours a week. There's virtually no risk of him running afoul of the 11-hour driving limit, the 14-hour driving window, or the 60-70-hour limit. Despite this, the driver may be tempted to use personal conveyance status to log commute time, etc., as off-duty personal conveyance. But that's just inviting unnecessary scrutiny, in my opinion. If the driver has plenty of available hours, what benefit is there to logging any time as off-duty personal conveyance? There really is none. Certainly, there are various types of motor carrier operations where drivers need the flexibility to legitimately log their driving time as personal conveyance. But there are plenty of drivers who simply do not need to use the status at all, and their over-reliance on the status does nothing but cause problems. All right, our last most common personal conveyance mistake is having no restrictions or limitations to that status. True enough, the FMCSA's guidance places no temporal restrictions on the use of PC. A driver could theoretically operate a commercial motor vehicle for 24 hours or more straight in off-duty PC status and not run afoul of any of the hours of service regulations. But surely you can see the problems with that mindset. First and foremost, even if the rules allow it, it's a bad idea for a variety of non-regulatory reasons, namely the heightened highway accident exposure that comes with it. No one can deny the devastating impacts that stem from fatigued driving. It's one of the most frequent contributors to catastrophic accidents. If you're operating a vehicle for lengthy periods of time without restorative rest, then you're just asking for trouble, even if what you are doing is technically legal. Do you really want to be in the position of having to defend your actions in front of a jury that is charged with determining whether those actions were reasonable under the circumstances? Additionally, extended use of personal conveyance status undeniably draws additional scrutiny from law enforcement. It's fairly easy for law enforcement to overlook small segments of personal conveyance use throughout the day, but large segments of off-duty personal conveyance time sticks out like a sore thumb. For these reasons alone, it's important for carriers and drivers to place reasonable limitations on PC use though the regulations and FMCSA's guidance don't technically require it. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this video. Personal conveyance misuse is continuing to lead to significant problems for drivers and carriers roadside. It's critical to get control of it before it balloons into a systemic problem. For even more in-depth information on these types of regulatory topics, be sure to check out our innovative online compliance courses for safety managers and for drivers over at trucksafeacademy.com. Also, be sure to check out our detailed compliance articles on our website, trucksafe.com, and follow us on our various social media pages for the latest highway transportation news and analysis. Thanks for watching.